Neanderthal, we're talking about yeah, Neanderthal. Just like Neanderthal didn't have a value system where they didn't harm their brother and sister or fellow man or they were in tune with the ecosystem of the planet, we don't expect modern day Europeans to be like that. They are learning their human characteristics from Africa. They have been at war with nature ever since we found them. And that's also in the text. In the text of ancient Kemet, when they talked about the Tamahu, that was a name that they used for the Europeans, they said, have been fighting since the time of Haru. Does not bend his back to, tort the, tort, to tilt the soil. And his feet is propelled by the search of food. And he lives in a barren land. That's what the ancient Kemet U thought of the Europeans. That was their knowledge of them during this time. Mm -hmm. Of the great civilizations of ancient Kemet. Alright, so we need to be clear. Even, come on, just even during the Roman times, the ghouls, which were the French and people like that, ran around naked with no clothes, no long cloth, no nothing. Just ran through and fought naked. When Hannibal came through that area, he talks about the naked ghouls and, and the European tribes who didn't even have clothes. You know, or the clothes that they did have were skins during a certain time of the year they would wear them. You know, and so, come on, Hannibal, that's like uh, 2,000 years ago. That ain't even that far ago, you know. So, you know, read, um, uh, look at the movie The 13th Warrior, based upon a book that was written by an Arab sheik about 1400 uh, BCE. I mean, no, 1400s in the, in the common era. That's only about what? No, it's just uh, just prior to Columbus. Columbus sailed 1492. Mm -hmm. So just prior to Columbus, many Europeans were still eating each other. In Northern Europe, the Vikings were scared of other groups of, north, of, of, of Europeans who lived further north. Now, the Vikings were the most ruthless of the Europeans. If they scared of somebody, what kind of people, what kind of Europeans are they scared of? People who were direct descendants of this Neanderthal, who still lived underground, who still lived in caves. When they went to war, they carried a pitchfork to bring back the dead bodies that they ate. All you got to do is examine the caves of Europe and you'll still see the bones uh, uh, 10 feet, 20 feet high in some of the caves. No, I mean, that's today? That's still today. You can still find that. They don't talk about that, but that's still there. But look at the movie, The Thirteenth Warrior. I love it because Europeans wrote the movie. They, you know, you can't say some blacks did it and tried to make them look bad. No, you know, go back and, 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 and look at that. And that's based upon a, a book that was based upon real documents uh, from, from Arabia. Can we segue now into Rome? I yes, let's, we'll let's deal. Touch let's, on let's, Greece and right, let's touch into Greece. Because now we're looking at the people who comes in to Egypt. Right. And but so what I want to look at is who comes in and what did they contribute, if anything. But what what was it like? What was that interaction with the uh, comedic people, the comedic priesthood? What happened? When, what's their legacy? OK, now, so let me let me just show you this this conflict. OK, so um, there's several maps that you can see that shows the gradation of color on the planet Earth. Uh, based upon geographical location and climate. And you'll see the darker peer people, the certain area, and then you get brown, beige, tan, and then eventually pale. Uh, there's no white people. The concept white people was just created a couple of hundred years ago. Uh, they pink and, and, um, and, and a pale color. So they're not white, okay? So that terminology of white people, you know. Um, it's a modern terminology, so I just need to make sure that that's clear for, mm -hmm. for people, you know, listening to this. Um, and then later they would to distort their books and make white pure and black bad, when all of the ancient records was just the opposite. White is recessive, black is dominant. Mm -hmm. Black is beautiful. Like I said in ancient Kemet, to deify somebody and give them their greatest homage was to make them black, you know. Um... So you, you can see they just reversed all of this. Uh, when the first Europeans learned to write, because they learned from the Africans, uh, they also wrote from right to left. Uh, most of the African writings and the African glyphs in the system of many of the Asiatics write from right to left, from where the sun, east to west. So they write from where the sun rises to where it sets. 
Finally, when the Europeans got control, when the Greeks got control of their society, and they became the dominant caretakers of their own culture, then they switched it and started writing from left to right. But the first, even Greeks wrote right to left. So I just need to be real clear about that. But the Greeks had no writing system. No, they no. got it. The ancient Kometa U introduced their writing system, took their language, and created a writing system for them, which is still based upon, and we, and we get this misnomer. The ancient Phoenicians were African people. So I need to make, because people say, oh, it was part Phoenician writing. No, the ancient Phoenicians are African people just from Northern Africa. So we need to be real clear. The, the Phoenicians were Africans who were basically the sea maritime people. They were the you know, people who, who were the traders who navigated the oceans. Okay, so I just need to be clear. So the Phoenicians are the predecessors to what will become the Moors. Uh, so I, I just need to make that clear. Okay, okay. So, okay. you know, if you want to go with ancient Moors, you don't see that word, but you'll see Phoenicians. So the Phoenicians migrated into what we captain to the ancient Moors. And then the Moors became more defined as the Islam rose because these Africans were converted to, to Islam and then they spread the seas you know uh, and so that's Moors became attached to that and so that's why you see the Moors the first thing they say to each other is Islam brother you know mm -hmm. all right so clear now so the first Greeks I made that mention before that the Greeks said that if it wasn't for Pata they would still be in the caves so I need you to understand that the area that is Greece today was a colony of ancient Egypt. Let me say that again. The area that is Greece today and Iona and all that area around there was a colony of ancient Egypt. Egypt founded it? Founded Egypt that started. area. That area was predominantly swamp area like Holland, all water areas. They built dams and dikes and drained the area, making it habitable. The Europeans had nothing to do with doing, with doing that. This was all done by African ingenuity. And then Europeans began to migrate into this area. They came in as workers, not traders and stuff like that. They didn't have nothing to trade that the Africans wanted. So they came in as workers. And were civilized by them. And were civilized by these Africans who were living there. Okay. And they were, if Greece was small little little city states for a long time at war with one another at war with one another because they that's what they were doing when they were further north mm -hmm. and they didn't get and we kind of contribute um who was the great Aesop fable a Aesop fails they'll try to say Aesop said he was an Egyptian so I need you to clearly understand that that's about a thousand that's 1200 BCE you know this is still before the Greek society came into existence the first you know, so even the first writers who claimed to be Greeks were still Africans. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I need to be really, really clear. So now they're in contact with our world. And all you have to see is the Mediterranean. We're trading. We're doing commerce there. Crete was a Greek colony. Ancient Crete was a Greek colony. And you can still see, you know, all the ancient work looked like you were still in Egypt. Okay. And which really not only was the colony of Greece, but was established by ancient Cush before Greece, before Kemet came into its total light. Mm -hmm. And so the Africans, as they were colonizing and developing Kemet, they were developing areas in the Mediterranean. Okay, now, how did some of these Europeans come into greater levels of knowledge? They had to enter the schools to do that. We have to understand, when you talk about ancient Greece, they can't tell, tell, talk to you about no educational system, no school system. No alphabet. No, they, what they call it, the Greek alphabet is what? It was created by the Africans, and it comes from the Phoenicians. Okay. Okay, all right, so they don't, ha they don't have that. Okay, so I need to be real clear. So now, look, these colonies were set up, and I talk about this in, even in my book, in Spiritual Warriors Are Healers. I talk about let me uh, get to this temples. I need to make the statement. They set up they temples. Do. The ancient Kometa U, the ancient Africans, set up temples outside of Africa as they travel the world. Mm -hmm. These temples 
became prototypes of where seats of civilization began in those areas. Here's an example. On my page 26 in, uh, in the book, Spiritual Warriors Are Healers. This is in chapter one. The great temples in Waset, Kemet, Iput, Isut, had subordinate lodges. It had it naturally in Kash at Taseti, Het Kapata, which became Memphis, um, in Mali temples, which later became the Dogon Sea, in Zimbabwe, and I showed you the great ruins in Zimbabwe. That was part of the Kash Temple, okay? And Manomatapa, Southern Africa. I showed you pictures of Manomatapa in Southern Africa. That's all part of the temples. In Ghana, among the Akan. The Akan, when I, when I traveled in Ghana and worked with the Ohene Asante, I was trying to learn the Ghanaian spiritual system. When we started talking, and I started talking about ancient Kemet, they abandoned, they didn't want to teach me, they wanted to learn about ancient Kemet because they said their stuff was based upon ancient Kemet. So all the so-called deities and things in ancient Ghana was based upon ancient Kemet. In Nigeria, among the Yoruba, in Kilwa, that's Eastern Africa, where, near where Tanzania is today, in Medina, near the Red Sea, Palestine, at Mount Carmel, that was a Kemetic temple set up. In Assyria, at Mount Hermon, in Lebanon, Kemetic temple set up. The foundation of their education in that area. Nobody was learned in that area unless they went to those temples. Um, in India, at the banks of the Granji River, the great temples, all set up by, again, these great Keshites who traveling through. Babylon, Burma, Athens, Athens in Rome is a seat of a comedic temple. And so the learned people there had to go there. Rome at Elton or Cotton at uh, um, Ela, Elia, at Elia Cotton in Rome. Uh, Rhodes, Delphi, <laughs> Melitus, Cyprus. Iona, for example, the so first so-called first Greek philosophers weren't even Greece, Greek. They came from Iona, which was a providence of ancient Kemet. They had a temple set up there. And so the first so-called Greek philosophers studied in Iona, got scholarships, only the best ones were allowed to come to ancient Kemet. So you have people like Thales, T-H-A-L-E-S. Thales is the so-called the first Greek philosopher. 640 in the in in BCE. He studies in Iona, then goes to Egypt and studies for 22 years in the Kemetic temples. He comes back up and sets up the first school of mathematics and philosophy in all of Europe. Are you hearing me? I hear you. Yeah. And they can go study this. This is Iona. Okay. All right. But, and let me just say this. Well, uh, George G.M. James did an excellent job by saying there's no such thing as Greek philosophy. Greek philosophy is literally stolen comedic philosophy. Okay, mm -hmm. but we're going to take it even further than that in this particular episode. I want to be, I want to be perfectly clear. The so-called concept of Greek philosophy was created by Europeans in their renaissance when they came out of the Dark Ages as a result of the Moors. The Moors introduce Greek philosophers to Europeans. Did you hear me? I hear the you. Moors introduce the great Greek philosophers, or the great philosophers, I, that, let me change that, the great philosophers who were in Greece and Rome to the Europeans. When the Vandals sacked Rome, all the, you see the Vandals, and the Germanic tribes who came in, they didn't have literature. They weren't writing. They were illiterate. They didn't come in and steal no books. They didn't try to take the great writings of Rome with them. They didn't try, they didn't go and, and go where the Senate, you know, was lodged and try to take their records back to ancient Germany and back.
to Finland and, and Norway. They didn't do any of that. They just came and sacked the people, destroyed the monuments and temples, and carried the, all the gold and booty they could take back. So I need to be clear. So when Rome fell, the Europeans who, who that's where you get the word vandal, vandalism from, from the vandals, mm -hmm. who just destroyed. Mm -hmm. So when I talk about Neanderthal, you see the connection here? Yeah. You have a people who come in and they just destroy. They don't want to take back any of the wealth that the Romans had even stolen. And the Romans had stolen from everybody. Now I can begin to understand how what we were talking about earlier that I said all the young people asked me, if we were this great, how did the uh, Europeans manage to conquer us? Uh, that fits right into you getting a vision of what you're dealing with. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So they can clearly see. So, you know, now let me just go back just one more step. So now the Moors, who are the learned scholars from Kemet, who were converted to Islam by the Arabs and annexed into the Arab world, conquer Egypt in 711. They come in and they are really the ones who are going to educate the Europeans. So they come in and set up the first temples, the first Senate, you know, the first temples, the first, all of that masjid is set up in Spain. The first universities in Europe. There are no universities in Europe in 711. Let me just start this. When the Moors came into Europe in 711, all throughout Europe, there are no universities. That concept we haven't even thought of at this point. The only people in Europe who can read and write are people who are connected to the Roman Catholic Church. So if you were not a monk, and almost no women, so if you were not a monk or part of the royal family, you couldn't read in Europe. So when they finally put the Old and New Testament together in the 1400s, they didn't have nobody who could read this stuff. So when Martin Luther put the 92 <laughs> theses on the wall of Wittenberg, that's in Germany. You people have to put this in problem. That's in Germany. So the Protestant religion that broke away from the Roman Catholic Church that set up the first school in Europe or the Protestants who broke away from the Roman Catholic Church. They wanted to keep the people ignorant. Now that the cat was out the bag, the Catholics said, oh, no, well, wait a minute. We got to compete with this. So they set up the, they set up the um, excuse me, the Catholic Church. I mean, in Catholic schools. So we was the parochial parochial schools. Mm -hmm. So you have the Protestant and then the parochial. So that, that was developed in Europe as a result, you know, after that. Okay, so, but there's still no great universities yet. Mm. So over 12, 13 universities was developed by the Moors in Europe. So when you talk about Cambridge, Brighton, and all of that, that's a result of these Europeans who intermingled with the African Moor scholars and then went back to Europe. And, the, and this is where they learn about the great thinkers in Greece and Rome. They were severed from all the stuff that Roman had stolen and pilgrimaged and taken. Because you understand, at times Rome sacked Babylon, had conquered Babylonia, had conquered Syria, had conquered many places in Asia. All the way to the great ranges, all the way, you know, like that, all the way to the, um, to the, what's the tallest mountains, uh, to, to, um, hmm. okay. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, but anyhow, you know, so Rome had conquered all that area. They had conquered Egypt. So they had taken the very best of all these places. So why didn't the Europeans have this information? Mm -hmm. Why did they go into their dark ages? Because when they sacked Rome... That was their connection to the black world. Rome, as ruthless as Rome was, was the connection to civilization for the rest of Europe. It wasn't in Britain. It wasn't in Scotland. It wasn't in Germany. It wasn't in Russia. So Rome had, Rome said that the ancient Pecks and Angles who were later to colonize in Britain, Great Britain, to become the Brits, Right, the Brits and them were took were so backwards that they didn't even make good slaves. That is true. That is what they said. 
Yes, that's recorded by the Romans. Mm -hmm. But let's talk about Rome. When Rome comes into uh, uh, into into Egypt, uh, the Romans and the Greeks are the same people, aren't they? Okay. Yes, you have to understand. Okay, so look at today. Greece is where the Greeks were. And look at today, Italy is where the Romans were. I know a lot of people don't associate that, so I gotta make, I gotta let them look at geography for a second. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember my son had some confusion one time, and he said, "Oh, Dad, uh, she's not uh, European; she's Italian." I said, "Son, let's go to the map. <laughs> you see that boot-looking thing right there? That's Italy. That's part of Europe." Okay. Now, I want you to be clear. The reason why even certain Europeans will say that. It's because some of the Mediterranean people, the Greeks, remember I talked about that 25%. Mm -hmm. Some of the um, Italians and, and, and Grecian people and Macedonian people were intertwined with Africa for thousands of years. The Romans didn't associate themselves with the, with the Pecs, the Angles, the Brits, the Germanic tribes. They looked at them as savage barbarians. Go read the Roman texts. And that's why they just slaughtered them on sight. In fact, some of the Romans and the Greeks were afraid to go into the forest further north beyond the German dramatic jars because they figured they'd get eaten alive. No one went there and came back. This is what the Romans wrote about. Today, these same people say, oh, our forefathers were the Romans and the Greeks. And Greek is our classical language. Well, these same Greeks disassociated themselves from those people. These same Greeks... <laughs> that they're saying is their civilization is based upon had wanted nothing to do with them. Look at them as a total different people and despise them. See, so when the Europeans came into their renaissance, they had to connect to something. When they came out of the Dark Ages as a result of the Moors, they got reintroduced to how powerful Rome was. They got in reintroduced on the, the information that was in Greece. You have to understand the Parthenon was just a ruins. The Roman Colosseum and all that was just ruins to them. Even during the Crusades, that was already sacked in ruins. So when the Crusaders went past that area, they didn't even put it together. A duh, uh, looked like there was some civilization here. No, that didn't even cross their mind still. <laughs> And then you had small pockets. Now let me just say this here. The pockets of Europeans that did connect the dots then was looked upon as the enemy of the, of the church. And the church was in control. So you had what? The round knights of the table. They were looked at as bad guys. Where did they get the information? They were connected to ancient, the, ancient, the knowledge that come out of ancient Greece. They were connected to Ptah. They were connected to that. The, 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 you, know, the, you know what I'm talking about, yes. yes okay. But the first Romans coming into North Africa, into Kemet, who were there, who were they, and what was their culture uh, and, and their knowledge base or their civilization, I, and how did yeah. they then interact? We have to be clear here that, for example, even what we call Rome today was a colony of Greece. I say that Greece was a colony of Africa, of Kemet. Okay. And Rome was a colony of Greece. Okay. Now we're getting somewhere. All right. So you, you starting to, you know, yes. see where I'm going. Okay. All right. You know. In fact, even what we call to Italians today, they had to annex and, and, and partition and fight civil war to become part of the Roman Empire. The Romans didn't even call the Greeks, I mean the uh, Italians, they weren't even part of the, ancient, the uh, early ancient Roman Empire. Do you understand? The Italians that we call today weren't part of the ancient Roman Empire. They were an elite family group, you know, that was connected to this p people who came initially from Greece. Uh. And they had to uh, petition. And only the royal family had voting rights. Now, who was the royal family? The royal family are family that were connected to the Africans and Greeks. So you have to be real clear. In fact, all of Europe's royal family, if you look at their family crescent, got some black person with woolly hair on it. 
the, the British royal family is connected to the German royal family from Bavaria. The Bavaria royal family are the Moors. Ah, yeah. Listen, <laughs> the, the British just changed their names during the European War because they were fighting against Germans and you didn't want to look like they were <laughs> that the people who were in charge of Britain were part of the same family they were fighting. So this is all modern that this stuff is being disguised. We have to understand that, you know. So if you look at the Bavarian royal family, which is in Germany, the Germanic tribes, their royalty leads to the ancient Moors in the black world. Just that comes back. Now you have to even understand that even when the Romans were in control, the blacks in Rome were trading with blacks in America. Not the red man in America, the blacks in America. Uh, explain. Please. That as Africans, remember I talked about these great temples. Remember, yes. I was uh, I, I I stopped when we got to Rome, but uh, in Delphi and places like that in Iona and Crete, right? But now we had Megara, the Temple of Euclid. We had um, Cartona, the School of Pythagoras. We have the Aztecs in Mexico. We have the Olmecs. In Mexico, we have the Maya in Central Africa, the Inca in Peru and South Africa are all connected to the Africans of the Nile Valley. I'll say that again. <laughs> that the Inca, the Maya, the Olmecs, and the Aztecs, all their sacred temples and sacred pyramids and sacred knowledge are connected to the Africans of the Hopi Valley. How so? How did it get connected? We came there as traders, as scholars, not as conquerors. And we set up their systems. That's why their systems looked like it appeared out of nowhere. Like people had no, like for example, in ancient Kush and knowledge, uh, ancient Kush, I just showed you a progression of knowledge that existed for hundreds of thousands of years. I just showed you some pyramids that existed 100,000 years ago. I showed you the zodiac, astrology, astronomy, the winter solstice, Haru, that existed in petroglyphs 100,000 years ago in South Africa. We went to Nata Playa in the Sudan and, sh and showed that 8,000 years ago we had our solar that system broken up. We understood the star chart. We understood everything that we know today. And then we showed you how all that came into ancient Kemet and all of that is there. Where? Okay. So you can see a progression. We can saw in Zimbabwe. It's in totally alignment with the pyramids in, in Giza. Right? Okay. Now, if we go to Mexico, do we see a progression of knowledge? No, it just appears. It just appears. If we go to Peru... In South America, is there a progression of knowledge? To be? No, it appears. And it appears on top of a mountain. You can't even build like that. You can't drag those stones up to the top of the mountain. You can't... Where do they get knowledge of carving in stone like that that almost can't be matched today? Mm -hmm. And it just appears. Right. Airports that connect all of those places to Africa and Europe. Air navigation. Mm -hmm. We have knowledge. I didn't even talk about that, but we, we, let me just keep going here. <laughs> okay, so Central America, you know, I talked about all of that. Uh, I already talked about uh, the Shang Dynasty. So we have pyramids in China, the Kambulu, and the Funan, Kampa, in, East, in Southeast Africa, Canaanite, we already talked about the Phoenicians. These are just some of the temples that were all connected in ancient Kemet. So this is how this knowledge gets spread all around the globe. Now, since they're in Mexico, listen, they have writings in the Grand Canyon that was written during the time of Tutankhamun in Madunecha. And the Smithsonian and all of them are trying to cover it up. When they first discovered it was a big article, ancient Egyptian glyphs found in the Grand Canyon, and then a week later, they said, oh, no, that was a mistake. We can't find any of that. And uh, that was a mistake. That never happened. 
you know, because the people who were funding this, you know, the secret society said, no, you can't put that information, you know, out there. Not only that, the Moors, they found glyphs, Madhu Netcher, in New England, <clears throat> United States, yes. from the Moors, from ancient Kemet. How do you get that? I'm talking, remember I told you, we, this, when, when you go to the Metropolitan Museum, right there in the old period, they show a ship bigger than the Pinta, Nina, and Santa Maria all put together in ancient Kemet. Correct. With sails and everything. Mm -hmm. So we had sea, ocean going vessels mm -hmm. during mm -hmm. ancient Kemet. Mm -hmm. Now I have to make this clear. Let me be clear. The Roman Navy were all navigated by African sailors. The Africans participated throughout, even in leadership? In, in Greece Rome. and Rome. And in fact, their lifeline was their hole on Northern Africa. Northern Africa was Rome's lifeline. They just pilgrimaged and destroyed the various peoples in Europe for control of dominance of land. But their, their gold, their minerals, their money, all came from northern Africa. Even that's why Carthage, for example, over there was so important. And that's why Hannibal came in there and gave them a, a royal whooping for a couple of centuries. You know? Even the food basket yes. was northern. Was Africa. northern Africa. That's why I wanted you to put yes. put all of that in perspective so we can see Rome and its relationship to the ancient Greeks food it, how basket. Greeks food basket was based on northern Africa. Mm -hmm. you understand? I, I'm gonna take something a little simple like this here, like olive oil. The important of importation of olive oil is an African phenomenon, not Greece. Olives were introduced into Greece. From where? From Northern Africa. And olives take you it takes they're unedible. Off the off the vine. They're so hard. <laughs> you got to soak them for a whole year, whatever it is. So this year's olives was from a, a two years crop from <laughs> from behind. We came here and did the importing and exporting of the olives and olive oil in Greece. That was controlled by the ancient Egyptians. When Greece took over and defeated them, then they took that over, and then the Romans would have taken over from, from the Greeks, you know. But I just wanted to show you, you yeah. know. All of the food, most of the food, that, the tomato, when you think of Italians, you think of pasta, that comes from China. When you think of tomato, that comes from northern Africa. Listen, that comes from Africa. They didn't have no tomatoes in Italy. It's still not indigenous there. That was brought in there. Okay. So I, I want you to see, most of the food crop still came as a result of the African trade. And guess who was really responsible for bringing food into Europe? The Moors. Because remember, when they went through their dark ages again, think about this, brother. I want to make it real clear so people think we're just not making this up. In the 1800s, just prior to the Civil War in America, you had a great famine in Scotland and in Wales. It was called the what? The potato famine. That's right. The, what group of people you know only got one food? The Irish. Yes. <laughs> Come on. You know, I'm just showing you how Europe have always been. Be, during the time of the Crusades, and even after the Crusades, Europe... Wait, let me just take 1492, for example. 1492 should be known for two things other than what we know it for. We think of it as Columbus. That should be the last thing on your mind. In 1492, the Moors were expelled from Spain. That's right. And the Jews were massacred. On April 1st, 1492, April Fool's Day, it's when the Europeans, the queen, they sent, sent a note saying, we will let you go. We'll have ships waiting for you at the port. And all the Jews and blacks, y'all have to leave Spain. And so on April 1st, they went down to the shore to, to, board the, you know, to get aboard the boats and the ships that the, the church said they would have waiting for them. 
And when they got down there, an army was waiting for them and slaughtered them. April Fools. Whose army? The uh, the European Crusade, the the England, they England, France, all of them came together. It was the Catholic Church. Okay. The Catholic Church it, it mustered the army. Same people who like were in the Crusade fighting against the, the Muslims. Okay, you know. So they were waiting there. And they killed the, the the Jews and the Muslims, you know, and that was April Fool's Day. So we're celebrating April's Fool Day. We're selling the decimation of uh, Hebrew and African people who were tricked that they would be allowed to leave peacefully and would be aided in their voyage. And when they got there, April Fool, and, and this was 1492. April 1st, 1492. So when we think of 1492, you shouldn't be, that shouldn't be a happy day. That shouldn't be a day of celebration. Okay. You shouldn't be wandering around talking about no Columbus. But now I'm beginning to see um, how the Greeks come into Rome, uh, come into uh, North Africa, into Kemet. They had a relationship. They had a relationship all the time. All the time. They were being trained. They were being listen. They were a educated. colony and they educated, colony. and only their best was be, would be taken in. And so, though, but let me just say this though. And George Jim James makes it real clear. As the best began to get educated, that was still too much for the savage, the, the average European. And so, all those so-called philosophers. Plato, we'll Socrates, kill. who kill and, and ostracized for teaching what? Foreign thought. Mm -hmm. So what Europeans are classifying as Greek philosophy, the Greeks said was foreign thought. And, and murdered them. Yes. Stoned, murdered. All was sent out of the, the, you know, the cities and, you know, and ostracized. Mm -hmm. you know, so I need to be real clear about this. So naturally, when the Romans, who just took on all of this information into their senate and into their educational system, which was not for the common people, so I need to be clear, during the greatest of Rome, 95% of the population was illiterate. And I'm being kind when I say 95. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay? And... Every movie does not depict the large number of blacks that were still there. there. Rome could not exist without the black population that was there. Talk about that population and that relationship um, and the differences within the culture. Because uh, when you look at Rome, you look at Caligula, you look at uh, how Rome... Caligula, oh man, that family, that will, that will drive you nuts, Caligula. That was all, nothing but murder during that time period. So Every I, Roman emperor was murdered during the time of the Caligula. Look, I, yeah, I, no, I just want to <laughs> look at when Rome takes over uh, Egypt, that cultural impact with the native Egyptians, what Rome contributed to civilization during that period, how was that interaction and the relationship between Rome and the native people? Okay, now, we have to be clear that Rome is riding off of their connection with Greece and are benefiting from what the Greeks have learned as a result of being in close factimity and close contact with the African nation. First of all, Greece is a colony of ancient Kemet. And so, um, but yet they are a different ethnic group. So we have to be clear. But they were not enslaved. Okay, so I'm just clear. Uh, the Africans taught them about the sea, you know, and travel and using um, through their Phoenician sleeps and through their boats and ships how to commerce. Because Greeks, Greeks become, they don't become relevant until they learn how to use the ships and go to the ocean. Because they don't have nothing naturally growing there. You have to be clear. Go to Greece today. <laughs> you can still, there's still nothing basically there growing. They're depending upon an import for almost all their foods and natural products. And so the Africans helped them develop that 
right? So once they begin to develop that, then the key is that Greece, because of their strategic location in the Mediterranean, became a trading port. So that's Greece's claim to fame, right? They are now a trading port. They, the, uh, the Macedonians became a great military power. Actually, the Mac Macedonians are probably one of the first great military powers in Europe. Okay, the Macedonians of the King Philip, right, uh, will be will sack that those city states that are you know around Greece. So Greece is still not a power yet. Macedonia becomes a power first. Mm -hmm. Then the Macedonians annex all that that will become Greece. Under Alexander in 332, when he spreads across and conquers all of Southern Asia, you know, all the way out to the, to the Tigris and Euphrates, and, and all the way to the borders of India, that's the Macedonians. Mm. We, just, we call it Greece because the, the Macedonians annex Greece. And the word Macedonia is kind of like falling from our uh, vocabulary. Because whoever controls the situation defines the situation. When they rewrote the books, they gave Greece the glory as opposed to the Greek Macedonians. Because so even the first Ptolemies were Greek and Macedonian. Okay? Uh, and annexing under Greece. Okay? So Greece became the, the, you know, their homeland. Okay? But Macedonia was attached to that. Okay? So now they're introduced. They have their first army. Alexander develops... Um, Romans cannot defeat Rome. Rome is a small place and a, a, uh, not a major powerhouse during Alexandria's reign. So they can't mess with Greece now. They're under the rule of Greece. Rome was under the rule of Greece. Now, Greek, the Macedonian Greeks are the powerhouse under Alexander. Alexander is undefeated as he travels all across southern Asia and then finally down into Africa. Like I said, when he came into Africa, he was on his way down to ancient Kush because he had heard there were no warriors greater than the ancient Kushites. This is what Alexandria heard. When he was in India, the Indians told him about the ancient Kushites because at that time there were supposed to be two great black worlds, that which was India and then that which was in, in Egypt and Cush. So now when he developed, when he conquered Egypt, Cush was waiting. And they came to the border near Abba Simba with elephants. And they were standing there. They were like, come on, we, you want some of this? And Alexander consulted the oracle, and the oracle said, you will lose badly. And he never went into ancient Cush. Okay. So I'm just trying to just trying to show you up here. Now, so let's move. So Alexander is finally poisoned. He's killed. Um, the Macedonians and they make a power play. So you had three great generals, and um, they kind of divide Alexander's empire up. One great general covers Asia, all the way out to Persia, that area there. Another one is in Egypt. And the other one takes to Macedonia and, and Greece. Okay, so Napoleon's empire is broken up into three areas. This makes the Romans easier to conquer them. Let me just say that. They couldn't have conquered Alexandria empire. But when Alexandria is killed and the Romans and then the, their empire is broken into three different facets, that allows Rome now to grow because now Alexander's empire don't have a grip on them anymore. Mm -hmm. And it's not controlling that whole known world. So the Roman empire now begins to expand. Now let me just talk about, we talked about the Roman culture. Let me just talk about here. The Roman gods, Greek at the top of their uh, pantheon is Apollo. Yes. The Romans don't change that. They worship Apollo. The Greeks have Typhon, who represents Set, who later becomes the, like the devil comes in. The Romans don't change that. They got Typhon. In ancient Kemet, you have Aset. The Greeks have Demeter. 
and the Romans now have Cy um, Cyrus. Athene, from Athenia, which was neat. Minerva, the Romans have Minerva. The Romans have Famuas, uh, um, who becomes Pan. Pan is the great um, Greek philosopher that deals with neat. Then they have Zeus, but the Romans have Jupiter. Uh, Basset becomes uh, Artemis, and the Romans have Diana. Hermes, the, uh, the group of knowledge. So the, the, in Kemet, you have Jehuti. The Greeks are to take Jehuti and turn him into Hermes. And now, watch this. The Romans would do Thoth and Mercury, where the word thought to, to think comes from. Comes from Jehuti, which comes from Hermes. So the Hermes texts, the books of Hermes, is the books of knowledge that the Greeks will Romans will take. Those, see, they sacked the libraries. What you have to understand, what the Greeks did was sack the libraries. And then had the Africans translate the Badu Netcher into Greeks. Then the Romans will take that and translate it into their language. In fact, most of the Roman scholars didn't even speak a, a, a so-called Italian language. They later spoke Latin, and it was, was also created by the Africans, so that all of them can communicate. During this time, there is no Spanish. You know, so we have to be clear about this here. Mm -hmm. Those are all controlled by these, these, you know, these people. There is no French as we know it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so even Latin is older than all of them. In fact, the first Spaniards and French spoke Latin. Mm -hmm. You know, that became a, a language that pulled them all together. Okay, so, you know, I'm trying to be, uh, yes. hopefully I'm, I'm, yes. I'm flowing here so that you know. So now that you know who the Roman gods were, that Mercury that they prevent was just Jehuti. Mm -hmm. And Jupiter, you know, their greatest was just Zeus, who was Amun. Zeus is Amun. And Zeus and Jupiter have to go back to Ethiopia every year to be recharged. Now, why would your God have to leave your country and go to Africa to get recharged if that's where it's from? So the Egyptians... The, the Greeks got what they got, even their gods, from, from Egypt, Egypt, from the Africans, from Kemen. and the Romans got what they got from the Greeks, so the foundation is still African. Yes. Okay, let's go. Yeah. So you got to be clear. So even Jupiter and them have to still give homage to Africa. Okay. But this is Roman God. This is the, the head of their pantheon. Right, so you need to be, you know, you need to be really, really, really clear about this. So when they talk about Mercury, Thoth, and Hermes, that's just Jehuti. Okay? And all of their texts is the hermetic, wait, the hermetic knowledge, so I'm, I'm trying to pull the covers off of here now. The hermetic knowledge, Hermes, hermetic knowledge, Jehuti. The 42 oracles of Ma'at. All comes from Jehuti or Ma'at. And so that's their hermetic text. Mm -hmm. Okay, which is the foundation of Greek and Roman scholars. All comes out of Kemet. They don't have anything other than to, to contribute to that. So their contribution to civilization, you can fit into a pinhead. Their senate was a, uh, an imitation, the Roman Senate is an imitation of the Greek Senate. The Greek Senate is an imitation of the priestship in ancient Kemet. Mm -hmm. All of the priests, the priests became the advisors to the Nasut Biti, the ruler of ancient Kemet. And so their Senate was trying to imitate that type of thing. Mm -hmm. But in ancient Kemet, it was based upon a spiritual thing. See, the ruler of ancient Kemet was also the high priest. Not in Greece and not in Rome. They didn't have anything to do with no spirituality. 
And so the Romans, the Greeks and the Romans took the spiritual out. But now I need to go back because you mentioned the idea about the Christians being slaughtered and all of that. I need to go back to the foundation of that. Mm -hmm. The Greeks, uh, after Alexander, you, know, you understand, Alexander saw, after he conquered Kemet, saw the adoration and respect that was given to the royal family and specifically to the Nisut Biti and to the high priest. And he wanted that type of respect. He didn't want respect just because the respect he had was just based upon fear, based upon his army, not based upon his knowledge and all of that. And so, it, you know, and you have to understand homosexuality was running rampant in Greece. That was the, and in Rome, that was the, mm -hmm. you know. So he wasn't getting the type that of respect. That was the culture. Yeah, that was their culture, which was alien in ancient Kemet. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so now, after Alexander realized that the only way he's going to get this type of respect He's going to have to go through initiation to show the people that he is a worshiper. Or he is the son of Ammon. And so that's what Alexander does. Not only that, Alexander, even though he's a flaming homosexual, hooks up with a black woman. Cleopatra. Uh, no, the Cleopatras aren't created yet. Cleopatra is created from the Ptolemies after Alexander is killed. Oh, yeah, that's correct. Right? That's correct. Right. Cleopatra is just a title yeah. for okay. the queen okay. of the Macedonian and Greeks. Right. Okay, right. right. So, well, but she he hooks up with Mark Anthony. Right. And... So, Alexander, even though he's a flaming, flaming gay and got male love, changes his everything. Because he wants to prove to the people that he is like the Nasut Bitchy of ancient Kemet. He is the son of Ammon. Mm -hmm. He sits at the feet. He is Ptah personified. He is Ra and consults with the sun. Okay? So now the, the, the white folks are just upset with this. So anyhow, they kill him. He's poisoned. Right? <laughs> and the Ptolemies is like, okay, now we, we ain't going through all of this. You know, we're going to close these temples. Alexander loved the temples. He visited all the temples he could. <laughs> the Ptolemies is like, oh, no, no. We come here to rule. Right? So after they close the temples... They take the books and they begin to recipher them into Greek. I already explained about the whole breaking into the dynasties on the Manatho and all of that. Yes. But now, so Ptolemy the first, well actually by Ptolemy the second, he's saying, listen, and Ptolemy is just a title. You have Ptolemy Philadelphias, like the city of Philadelphia. It's named after Ptolemy, a, a Greek king who was head of Egypt. I bet you the people in Philly don't even know that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. So Philadelphia, okay. Ptolemy, Philadelphia, okay. All right, so uh, you need to know. Um, uh, Cleopatra, Cleopatra Beatrice. Cleopatra Bertholomy. You know, they, uh, Cleopatra is just a title also. So all of these new kings of ancient Egypt now, who are Greek and Macedonian, the ruler, the male is a Ptolemy, and the female is a Cleopatra. Most of the Cleopatras are kind of mulattoes. They're Greek and Macedonian and African. Most of the Ptolemies are just Macedonian and Greeks. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I need, I need you to kind of be clear about that. You know, so there's mixture in the blood, but every chance they got, the Ptolemies were just, you know. So you had seven Ptolemies and 14 Cleopatras. Cleopatra, who made love to Mark Anthony and the boys, was Cleopatra the 14th. I mean, Cleopatra the 7th was 14 um, Ptolemies. Her brother, Cleopatra the 7th, her brother, she was married to her brother, who was Ptolemy the 14th. Alright, so I'm just trying to show this, this relationship. So you declare Patrick's and then Okay. So now Ptolemy the third wants this adoration that the Africans are getting. He's not getting that. He needs his army to get respect. Mm -hmm. So he commissions the priest to create a God image of himself. And that becomes Serapis. And Serapis becomes the, the Apis bull, Osiris, 
and Haru all mixed together. Right, and ceremoniously bestowed upon him. On him. To make him a god. To make him a god. So that's the beginning of these Greek and Macedonian rulers being godlike. Mm -hmm. Okay? And Serapis later will be the prototype of your Jesus. Correct. Okay? The so, Africans reject Serapis. The right. Romans kill him. I, but I want you to explain Yes, that. yes. Okay. And that's so, why you had so much murder of the so-called Christians. In it, but the Christians were were. Africans who rejected. So let's go back and talk about Coptic. So I need to talk about that's the yes. birth of Coptic. Mm -hmm. So the followers of Serapis become Coptics, and that's the birth of the Coptic Christians. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, they're to take the, the Greeks are bringing this as a religious philosophy which was created by the ancient Egyptians for them. Correct. Based upon their mythology right. already. Right. Because the Greek don't have no mythology like this. So there starts with Serapis, which was created by the Africans. Okay, so we're clear that. The African priesthood. Right. Now, by the time when the Romans come in, they want to deify this. First, first of all, the Romans got a serious problem with this character. Hmm. And... Uh, <laughs> Because, you know, they just sacked the Greeks. They ain't trying to deify nothing that the Greeks did, you know, like that. And they're definitely not trying to deify it because all the Coptic priests at this point are Africans. The Coptic priests that are in Greece are Africans. The Coptic church is an African church. Correct. The Kemetic temples, which have been closed by the Greeks, now become Coptic temples. But the science is lost mm. because the Coptic priests are no longer the priests that had to go through the 42 oracles of Ma uh, or uh, the, the books of Jehuti, the 42 books of Jehuti. You know, now we got a, a, a creation being done. And so the Coptic priests now are in Greece. So the Romans now are just doing these people in. So. It was the Coptics who got done in first, not the Jews or the Hebrews. Okay, mm -hmm. so you have to be, be real clear about that. And I did, I, we haven't really mentioned about the Hebrews too much, you know, in here. So you have to understand, all the early Hebrews were all African people. Mm -hmm. And we don't get a change until the Romans. So let me say this. The ancient Hebrews, up until the time of the Romans, was predominantly African with a few Asiatic converts. Greek and Asiatic converts. And those Greek and Asiatic converts were all merchants who were traders mm -hmm. and saw it advantageous to move into this field. And they really got converted there so that they could inherit that which the Hebrews had set up as a real result of their trade and commerce with the ancient Egyptians. And then that was their link into Babylonia and Syria. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Palestine had been sacked a dozen times. Israel is is for Isis, Ra, and El, which was the word for God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Israel, the first capital, was a satellite of ancient Kemet. Mm -hmm. yeah, it, it, clearly, it was a colony of ancient Kemet that broke away just like the colonies of the 13 colonies in the United States was a colony of Great Britain mm -hmm. and broke away and got its independence. Mm -hmm. So I want people who are studying the Jewish faith to clearly understand that Israel and the formation of that state in there was a colony of ancient Kemet that eventually broke away. And just like America is the child of Europe, England. The Hebrews, as we know the way, is a child of ancient Kemet that broke away. Mm -hmm. But it did not take the best with them. And we won't go into that. That's another whole, you know, whole right. philosophy. Okay, you don't want to go into the whole Hebrew, Greek, right. you know, thing. But now, the sort of persecution now, so the, 
the uh, Romans now, when they take in 30 BCE, the Romans conquer Egypt, killed, you know, conquer Greece, and annex all of Northern Africa. So all the possessions that the Greeks had now become Roman territory. Mm -hmm. And so this religion thing, they're not down with at all. They are basically atheists. They have their gods, you know, that they worship, you know, but they don't have no religion, like, you know. So they just not down with this at all. And they don't have no spirituality. Right, no spirituality. That's out of the question. They're ruling by might and strength. Okay? And the Senate is their organizing body that kind of calls the shots that the uh that's supposed to happen, you know. Okay. So, you know, I, I need are we clear yeah, on this yeah, here. Yeah, okay. So now Roman emperors, let me just go back and, 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 and talk about this. The Sparsisi, um, I believe, can you stop? This guy only has an example, the Dodecahedron. You want to connect with the universe. So if you're trying to connect with your ancestors, a shortcut is to understand that your DNA is no other than a Dodecahedron. Just twisted, spiralized. From the upper hand down, looking downward, the planet Earth, is it round or is the planet Earth flat? Of course, we say round. And it's round by perception, but planet Earth is actually flat. True. As science evolves, we learn new things. From the upper hand down, Above Earth, looking down, they've confirmed that the planet Earth passes through the image of a dodecahedron. The planet Earth is a part of the DNA of the universe. So your DNA looks like this, but twisted, and your planet looks like this. So if you want to tap into universal energies, you may as well tap into the Earth's energies. If you want to connect with your ancestors, the energy that your ancestors passed through is the dodecahedron, one of the five platonic solids. Got to understand the energy before you can utilize it. Got to understand the energy before you can utilize it. So all of these, energy passes through these different types of polyhedrons or shapes. So if I want to access the universe.